Glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Yoshua HaMashiach. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are in the second book of Kings, chapter 9. And to put you in context, we are looking at this episode when Jehu was slaying the house of Ahab and then proceeded to the massacre of Baal worshippers. We are going to pick it up in 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 16. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. Verse 18, And Jehu gathered all the people together, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. And we see the zeal of Jehu in accomplishing this task that he has in terms of destroying the Baal worshippers. Verse 19, Now therefore, Call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Now you can serve one of two masters. Either you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, or you serve the devil. And here all those prophets and servants and priests of Baal are the ones targeted. Paul always took great care after he identified himself in his letters to immediately state after his name, Paul, always specifying an apostle of Jesus Christ, a servant of Jesus Christ, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And so Paul always associated himself with the light, with Jesus Christ. But here Jehu is looking at those who associated themselves with Baal. We continue in verse 19. Let none be wanting... For I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. And so there is a threat issued so that those worshippers of Baal who would not show up, their life would be taken from them. They would be slain. And you may think, well, that's the reason why the Baal worshippers will come. But when you think about it in the faith, those who are called to the faith in Christ, there is also a threat associated with not coming to the faith. Because Christ tells us that those who do not come to him will suffer the fate of the eternal fire where the flame dieth not. And this type of death, actually the second death, where you are eternally separated from God, the spiritual death, is even worse than the first physical death. And so, in other words, where here there is a threat by Jehu to kill those who will not show up amongst the Baal worshippers, this is physical death. That is the threat. But for those who will deny Christ and not come unto the promise of eternal life, the second death is the threat. This is why Jesus said, fear not those who can kill the body, but me who can kill the body and the soul, both of them. And so there is a greater threat in not coming to the faith in Christ than there was not to come to the Baal worshiping that Jehu was organizing. And I say this because later on we will discuss how the Baal worshipers did come and comply with the call that was made for them to assemble as we will compare this to the way that saints are not necessarily so prompt and disciplined in answering the call of the Lord. And so let us go back to verse 19, 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 19. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting. For I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. And so this is another incentive for the Baal worshippers to come. 
And in that, you will see their loyalty, their fidelity, and commitment to honoring Baal. Satanists have a commitment to honor their master. Do we have the same commitment in the faith? Or are we slack? We will get back to this. But Jehu did it in subtlety to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. Verse 20, And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And so there is a formal call that is made to assemble amongst the community of Baal worshippers. Just like the Lord also issues out a calling to come to the faith in Jesus Christ by saying, come to me, all of you who are weary, come to me and lay your burden on me and take up my burden, which is light. There is a calling into the world to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, but there is also another calling by the devil to enjoy the things of this world, a calling to live in the world and so to the things of the flesh. But what the devil doesn't say is that sowing to the flesh will reap eternal condemnation. Whereas the Lord does tell us, if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap life everlasting. And so there is a solemn assembly for Baal that is declared, and they proclaimed it. Verse 21, And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And so those who worship Baal, those who have decided to follow the devil, those who are out to enjoy the things of this world, they do not miss this great opportunity to worship their God, to honor Baal. They are all in. And this, after that Jehu had made a proclamation to call a solemn assembly for Baal, to call an assembling of all Baal worshippers around the name of Baal, by those who find pleasure in the things of this world, by those who find pleasure in witchcraft, by those who find pleasure in being rebels to the Almighty God. And this can be put in contrast with the parable of this great king who is in the image of the Lord, sending out an invitation and bidding his guests to the feast, to the great supper. But when he does so, even though there is a guest list, which means that there are guests, which means that they have been identified, because on a guest list you find names, some of these guests are not going to show up. The guests are not coming. And so the first call was made. And so a single proclamation was made in the case of Jehu. And did you see it? The house of Baal was full from one end to another. But the Lord is left wanting because he bid his guests. And what happens? They don't come. And therefore the Lord is making a second call and saying, go fetch those by the wayside and tell them to come. And then you have a group of people who will show up. But as we discover in Matthew chapter 22, there are still some who will show up and not have the proper attire, not have the proper clothing or garment. And those ultimately will be cast in outer darkness. But the point is that after the first call, all the Baal worshippers came as Jehu had made a proclamation. But when it comes to the faith in Christ, the king in the image of the Lord made a similar proclamation, but the guests did not come. And what was their excuse? Some wanted to be with their wife, with their husband. And so they wanted to be with their spouse because they had gotten married. Some wanted to prove an oxen that they had purchased. Some had to go about their business. And so the things of the world were their preoccupation. 
and the faith in Christ came second. So that at the first calling, the image here of saints is that they may be distracted by the things of the world instead of coming to the Lord. When we have been told, love not the world and the things that are in the world, because the pride of life, the lust of this world, it is not of the Father. But in contrast, you have the people of Baal, who after one proclamation by Jehu, all come to assemble around the name of Baal. And this is also why Jesus said, where two or three are gathered around my name, I am in the midst of them. Jesus knew there wouldn't be many flocking to come unto him. That's why he says, broad is the way that leads to perdition, but narrow is the way that leads to the straight gate. That leads to the door. I am the door, says Jesus. And again, that's why I pointed out earlier, you may say, well, the Baal worshippers came because there was a threat made on their life. But you cannot use that as an argument in the sense that even for those who are called unto the faith in Christ, there is a similar threat, if you will, that if they don't, they will find eternal condemnation at the end of their path. Because Christ is the eternal life. And so where you pass on Christ you pass on eternal life and you end up selecting eternal condemnation, the spiritual death, which is even worse than the physical death here, which is the threat made by Jehu to the Baal worshipers who would not come. And so we're operating under what we could say just for the purpose of discussion, similar consequences of death, where if you do not show up, death is the consequence. But even if that is the case, Baal worshippers, under the threat of death, show more zeal, discipline, and dedication to the honoring of their God and show up to the great sacrifice for Baal. And so the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And this is something we also hear when we listen to different testimonies. Those who are involved with Satanism, witchcraft, they dedicate themselves to their craft with great zeal and discipline, making incantations often for a long time, over hours, whereas saints in the Lord have difficulty to find time to pray for more than a few minutes. And so that zeal that people have on the dark side, if you will, on the side of Baal, there is a greater zeal than there is in the faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ, who again said, when I will return, shall I find faith. And so saints have to be careful because when the call is issued and proclaimed by our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to be careful not to be caught in the things of the world because those who live and are friends with the world, they become enemies of God, as we learn in James chapter four. And this has been something that repeated itself over and over over the course of history. The Lord has sent out prophets to make proclamations and invite people to submit to the authority of the Lord and be in conformity with the law of the Lord. But they have not listened and they have done to these prophets as they saw fit. And so an analogy can be made that these prophets were making a calling to come to the kingdom or to respect God in a proper way, but they were slain because there was rebellion against that call, against that proclamation to honor the Almighty. And so in essence, the Lord was left asking himself, testify against me, my people, what have I done so that you would turn from me after everything that I've done for you why are you looking the other way and committing spiritual whoredom? The Bible tells us that the Lord in his despair will say, I have stretched out my hand to a stiff-necked people time and time again, and they have answered me, Lord, we are holier than thou. And so the people think they are holier than God, that they don't need God thinking highly of themselves. And even in Malachi chapter one, 
the Lord confronts the people and the priests. And the priests have the audacity to say, how have we conducted a bad service for you, Lord? How have we polluted your table? How have we been contemptible, Lord, concerning you? And so there are all sorts of excuses for people not to get in line with the Lord, whether it be the things of the world, as we saw when the king issued out an invitation to his guests and they did not come, and a second invitation had to be made to go and get the people from the wayside, or if it's not that they're occupied by the things of the world, it is that they believe in their own self-righteousness and tell the Lord, we are holier than thou, and we are walking away from you and committing spiritual whoredom because we believe in other gods. Our love for you has faded away. This is why you read in Jeremiah chapter 2, the Lord painfully remembering his people, the first love that they had for him. And he says, I remember you, my people. When we were going through our espousals, the love that you had for me then, but you have become a harlot. You have been lying with all sorts of nations. You have been committing whoredom, and there isn't one with whom you have not been lying down. But thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. And so we say all this to see that in the faith, if it's not the world, it's the person's self-righteousness and their arrogance and pride, which leads them to spiritual whoredom. All these things make it so that there is a first call proclaimed, issued out to the people of this world. A light goes out into the world, makes a proclamation, a call, an invitation, and few there be that accept it. Few there be that find the straight gate and enter therein. Whereas broad is the way that leads to the wide gate, and many go through there. The Baal worshippers, when they were tempted by the world, if you will, as an image, when they were called to honor Baal, and a great proclamation was made, and the image of the Supper of Baal is there, many came. In fact, there was not one who was left not coming. They all came, so that from one end to another, the house was full. And so this is the image of Satan's gospel being pushed out into the world where everybody is flocking onto this gospel, which basically says, live your life the way you want to. Be yourself. YOLO, you only live once. But it omits to say, Hebrews 9.27, it is given to you to live once, but then the judgment. And so Satan is tempting the lusts of the flesh, and people are answering that call, by the masses. Let's be rich. Let's enjoy the lust and sexual perversion of this world. And I used to be a part of that. Let's have great possessions. Let's conquer more land and disregard a man's heritage. And people become wise at doing that. In Micah chapter 2, it says that there is a woe to the rich who on their beds, they are devising evil, and when the morning comes, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand to do so. And they take a man's heritage, they take a man's land, his house, and women and children are taken out of their pleasant homes. And we learn in Habakkuk chapter two, woe to those who establish a city by iniquity, by shedding blood. And so we get back now to 2 Kings chapter 10. And putting all these things in context, let us go back to the top, verse 18. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. And so there is a calling. Many are called, but few are chosen in the faith. But here many will be called and all will be coming forward. 
Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And the subtlety is interesting here because it also relates to how the devil lures people to come atop on top of mountains and promise these mountains to the people, promise the kingdoms to the people, promise the wealth of this world to the people, but not point out that this path, this way, leads to eternal condemnation. That the glory of this world, when a man's soul is to the flesh, and what will he give for his soul if he takes this mountain to rule on it as given by the devil, he eventually will be destroyed because the devil is a liar and he promises wealth, but he takes your soul. And so there is a subtlety here by Jehu, just like there is a subtlety in the devil who promises great things in this life, physical life, but doesn't point out the demise that awaits in the spirit after it's all said and done. And so Jehu here likewise does it in subtlety where the Baal worshipers are going to come to the house of Baal but they don't know what's coming after. But Jehu did it in subtlety to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel. Now, that gospel, if you will, that call, if you will, is, is proclaimed throughout the whole earth. Remember that Jesus said, this gospel will be preached unto the ends of the earth. But the result is not the same, because not all will come to the gospel of Christ. And all the worshipers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal. And the house of Baal was full from one end to another many adhered to that gospel. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. You remember, brothers and sisters, in Zechariah chapter 3, how Joshua the high priest is cleansed of his iniquity and puts on white clothes he puts on new vestures, new vestments. You see, we need a new birth in the kingdom of Christ. We need to be born again, John chapter 3. We have to put on Christ. But here, the worshipers of Baal have their own vesture. They have their own vestment. And so they're being marked as Baal worshipers by their spiritual clothing, by that clothing that they put on, they plead their allegiance. And this can be a reference to the mark of the beast, where you have to confirm in the house of Baal that you are one of his. And why is this interesting? Because when you're given that vestment, it is a conscious decision that you're taking to put on Baal. And now there's no excuse. You know what that vestment is. So if you choose to put it on, it's a conscious, deliberate act by which you are putting on Baal and accepting his mark. And so they're being marked for destruction here because they're going to be destroyed. And likewise, the mark of the beast, when you will be offered to take it, you're being offered a vestment to put on Baal and confirm your pledge of allegiance to him. It is deliberate it is conscious, and there was a call to that place where everybody knew where they were going and why they were going. They were going to honor Baal. But as for those who love Christ, that's not the vesture that they will have. That's not the vestment that they will put on. Paul will say, I have reserved you chaste and with a white garment and pure for Christ to be his bride. Verse 23, and Jehu went and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal and said unto the worshipers of Baal, search 
and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshipers of Baal only. Separation. The sheep on one side, the goat on another side. And you see here the mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord in that if there was a Baal worshiper who came here and by mistake and actually realized that this was not the place for him to be, if there was a lost sheep there ending up amongst the goats, he would have an opportunity to be sought out, that one lost sheep, he would be sought out amongst the crowd to be taken out of there. You see here, we have also the image of how the Lord always takes out, raptures out his people from a place where there's going to be destruction. People usually like to point to Noah, who was taken out by way of the ark when there was the flood. They like to point to Lot, who was taken out of Sodom before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. People like to point to Rahab, who was taken out of Jericho before it was destroyed. But there's also this instance here, this image, as a foreshadowing, as a type and shadow of how the Lord, even though there is a place set up for destruction, he will make sure that there is not one righteous there, or else he would not destroy that place, as he told Abraham. If there's one righteous in a place, the Lord will not destroy it. So before the Baal worshippers are destroyed, there is a verification made to be sure that there is not a sheep among them. Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. And so this is the mercy of the Lord. The Lord says, be ye careful my people, that you be not found amongst those who practice iniquity on the day that I come, because if I find you there, you will be destroyed alongside them. But at the same time, we have just seen that prior to destroying, the Lord will have mercy to take out his own people from these places where the evil ones have gathered to honor Baal, where those who have gathered to do evil have come together, the Lord will look one last time to make sure that if there is someone that belongs to him amongst this crowd that needs to be destroyed, the Lord will take them out. And so again, this is an image of the grace and mercy of the Lord for the lost sheep who at the last minute can still be raptured out, taken out of a place appointed for destruction. Verse 24, and when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without and said, if any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. Verse 25, and it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, go in and slay them. The Bible tells us in Nahum, what do you imagine against the Lord? Affliction shall not rise up the second time. The Lord says, those who have made themselves enemies of God, while well, God reserveth wrath for his enemies. God is not mocked. Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, go in and slay them. You see, the judgment has fallen. And once the judgment has fallen, they cannot remove their necks from that trap. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal and broke down the house of Baal 
and made it a drought house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. There will come a day when the chaff will be taken and taken away to be burned with fire. The tear, but the wheat will be brought to a different place to be stored, and those who are part of the wheat will grow up as calves of the stall. Separation. Do you think that I've come to bring peace on earth? I've come with a sword to cause separation because there is no fellowship between light and darkness. There is no fellowship between Christ and Baal, Baal And so brothers and sisters, what have we seen in this episode? We see that a call is made in the world for people to corrupt themselves and many accept that invitation. And once they perish, they reap eternal condemnation. But we see that inside of their error, there is a zeal to go all in, in the way that they have chosen, that way of perdition. Whereas, if you look at the faith, there is a call made likewise by the Lord, but there are some who will not answer it. You see those who, having been invited, have excuses not to come when they are bid, when there has been a formal proclamation made to come. They have excuses. And then those who come after, some come in a proper attire and some don't. And so the Lord is left wanting, wondering what he has done, what he has not offered at his feast, at his supper, that would make it so someone would not come. If you read in Esther chapter 1, you see how King Ahasuerus had an outstanding feast that he held. And it was a thing of beauty, a thing of glory. The Lord is offering us even more than that. But very few accept that call. Whereas the devil is able to have a full house while the church of the Lord is almost empty. When I return, will I find faith? Testify against me. What have I done? that you may turn away from me, the source of living waters, eternal life. Yet in both instances, Jehu made a threat on the life of the Baal worshippers who would not come. But Jesus also warns us on the other side about the faith in Christ that if we do not come, eternal condemnation in the spirit awaits, a place where the flame does not die. And so, brothers and sisters, this is a call for us to have zeal in the faith so that we be saints who are fully committed to the honoring of our Lord Jesus Christ and assemble around his name and that we offer ourselves as a proper sacrifice, that we pursue the things of the Lord, that we pursue that which is good, that which is righteous, that which is holy, and seek to grow in our Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on so that it is no longer us who are living, but Christ living in us. I hope that this encourages you, brothers and sisters, to seek the Lord with more hunger, with zeal, the way that Jonah sought after the Lord when he was in a difficult predicament, being in the big fish's belly. May you be blessed, brothers and sisters. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Alleluia. Amen.